We are slowly making our way out of our deep freeze. Slowly, still pretty darn cold outside. By next week, though, it'll feel like shorts weather. Kathy will have a check on our forecast in just a few minutes. Mayor Michael Hancock says that they've been talking to the state or to state and federal governments about getting more help supporting migrants who are coming here to Denver. He says he'd like to see more action come from Washington. This is a really difficult situation for all cities around the country. I'm in conversation with mayors almost on a daily basis across this country, and it's a challenge. Cities are bearing the brunt, and I've said this all week long, but really the inactivity, the lack of leadership coming out of Washington on this issue. We've had opportunities to address it. We have it as a nation, and it's because of the unfortunate partisan politics in Washington that has put us in this situation. The mayor says the city has spent in excess of $2 million of its general fund just in the month of December. More than 1,500 migrants have arrived in Denver since December 9th, according to the city. Hundreds are staying at city emergency shelters or centers set up by other groups. Now, some asylum seekers are temporarily heading up north to Larimer County. Nine News reporter Courtney Yoon joins us now. And Courtney, Larimer County agreed to help find shelter for dozens of migrants. Yeah, that's right, Steve. The Larimer County Office of Emergency Management says they're providing temporary mutual aid to the city and county of Denver as migrants continue to arrive in Colorado. A total of 57 migrants from Venezuela are in Larimer County right now, but will only be staying there for seven to 10 days. The Larimer County Office of Emergency Management says they're working with, the, with community partners, including two churches and the Red Cross, to shelter the migrants. One of the churches helping out is Peak Community Church in Fort Collins. Pastor Eddie Hopkins tells us they've been flooded with donations, food, money, and warm clothing. He says he's heard harrowing stories of violence and abuse from the migrants who have fled from Venezuela. We're here because of the kindness and generosity of our Creator. And, and so um, uh, why wouldn't we help other people? That's more, I think that's really the question is why wouldn't we? The group will be only be staying in Larimer County for a little over a week. After that, some of them will be traveling to family or friends already here in the States and others will return to Denver. If you'd like to donate to this effort, we're working to get information on how to do so on 9news.com. All right, Courtney Yoon reporting. Thank you. Now, we know it's been a messy time at DIA. Check this out. A man who had a layover at DIA shot this video of all these people waiting at their gates, trying to rebook their flights, or finally boarding after hours of waiting. As mm -hmm. you can imagine, these passengers and many more really got to know DIA unintentionally, of course. Nine News reporter Luis De Leon explains why some airlines say the flight delays and the baggage problems were truly a perfect storm. <laughs> Ah, the not so holly jolly sight of holiday travel. Many expect a delay or two every year, but for a passenger like Grace Ling, it kept getting delayed probably like eight times until 2.36 a.m. She was not expecting to spend all night at DIA. She was trying to get home to San Jose, California after a trip to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The connection? A snowy and extremely chilly Denver. We boarded our plane probably around 12 a.m. I fell asleep for about an hour and I woke up from my nap. I looked out the window and I saw snow outside. I, I thought I was like waking up from a nightmare because I thought we were landing. We're actually still in Colorado. In the process of it all, she heard what many claim was a problem the last few days. I woke up to an announcement saying that they had to deboard everyone off the plane because they didn't have enough staff to get all the ba all the passengers' baggages on the plane. Aside from flight delays, there were a lot of problems with passengers getting their luggage. DIA says it's the airlines that employ the ramp workers at the airport. A spokesperson for United said the delays for flights and baggage were the result of a variety of factors. First and most obviously, the weather. They're at the mercy of the impacts that severe weather causes on other airports across the country. Spokesperson added that ramp workers have to take warming breaks when it's dangerously cold, and sometimes ramp equipment can face issues in such temperatures. I like to just kind of see the bright side of every situation. As for Ling, she may not have had the arrival time she wanted, but still has her optimism. But I guess my message is it will be over soon. It's not there forever. For Nine News, I'm Luis De Leon. Airport officials say they've had teams handing out blankets to stranded passengers and some of the restaurants and the stores have stayed open past their operating hours to help. As of now, they are expecting things to get a bit better this weekend as Christmas Day usually sees 
fewer passengers. It the, also, yeah, the weather's going to be a lot nicer, which certainly is going to help. A lot of people flying for the holidays. People are driving as well. Here's a live look out of our studio here off Spear Boulevard. Roads are looking a lot better today too. Driving around, I can tell you they feel a lot better today as well. Uh, CDOT's going to suspend construction work this weekend and next weekend to make holiday travel a little smoother. CDOT says that their crews have been working nonstop to clear and treat the roads, but they say icy conditions until Christmas Eve. You can expect those when it finally starts to warm up on Christmas Eve. Kathy, yes. it's been fun navigating those some of those roadways. Has it though? Is that um, the word we're choosing? It depends on your, your, yeah, your definition of fun. Yeah, it's just been stressful any way you're traveling. If you're walking on the ice, if you're driving a car on the ice and snow, or you're trying to get in and out of the airport, it's just a stressful time of year. And this is a storm, you guys, that we're going to remember as the Christmas 2022 storm because millions of people affected by the Arctic blast, which is still going tonight. That cold air is headed all the way to the Gulf Coast region, while we're seeing a bit of a drier flow and aloft. But upstream is a little more moisture. So those of you looking for the ski forecast and the snow report, a little more more light snow coming in for Steamboat, Aspen and Vail, not for Denver. Beautiful evening out there, but you can almost see the cold uh, and really even with abundant sunshine today, it did not warm very much at all. And even though temperatures got above zero, it didn't really feel like it. Decent travel on I-70 tonight. These were the low temperatures we started with this morning, so an improvement over yesterday. DIA was minus 24, minus 12 today, uh, 22 below zero in Greeley though, and about 17 below in Fort Collins. And so a cold start, still pretty chilly, but it's beautiful out there uh, this afternoon. Now our current readings, <laughs> it's two above zero in Denver, five in Greeley, seven in Fort Collins. It's just crazy cold, but you factor in the wind and these are your wind chill values, which we're starting to see some improvement in that. But nonetheless, the values could go to 25 below in northeastern Colorado. So National Weather Service putting out a wind chill advisory through 8 a.m. tomorrow. Denver not included yet. We'll see if that changes, but at this point we're not included. We're going to see skies clear here, a few clouds drifting in and a little bit of light snow for you skiers in the high country tomorrow, but not enough to uh, really be a problem for travelers. So we'll watch the numbers drop tonight and in Maine weather. We have another cold night coming up with a wind chill advisory east, but you're going to love the Christmas weekend forecast. The weather word now will be warmer. Ooh, <laughs> warmer. That's a great word. I love it. After what we've been through, warmer right? sounds wonderful. We only have one way to go, I think. Yeah. All right, Kathy. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. South Metro Fire had a really busy morning putting out fires in another day of frigid temperatures. Crews responded to what they called a stubborn fire at an apartment building near Dry Creek and I-25. The cold weather froze one of the hose lines. 15 units had to be evacuated. Good news, nobody got hurt. And they're still looking into how that fire started. Then in Littleton, 24 units were evacuated at an apartment fire there. It happened on South Windermere Street. Two people were rescued. Again, nobody got hurt. Firefighters are also still working to figure out what caused that fire. The city of Aurora down to four finalists to become the city's next fire chief. Now they're asking the community for questions and for feedback before they start the final candidate interviews. The finalists are Richard Davis, the assistant fire chief in the department in Austin, Texas, Alec Otten, fire chief in Henrico County, Virginia, Alan Robnett, the interim chief with, with Aurora, and Froilan Pepper Valdez, fire chief in Billings, Montana. The city says that they are working with the firm to make sure they recruit a diverse pool of candidates and the finalists will now go through an in-person selection process. On January 5th, there will be a meet and greet where the public can meet these finalists. Then the city is expected to make their decision at the end of January or early February. Today, a 14 year old from Denver who was shot on his way from home from school earlier this year got a very special holiday surprise. A gunman shot and hit Cameron in the arm while he was driving home with his mom on the first day of his freshman year earlier this year. Officers at the scene treated Cameron until paramedics arrived, likely saving his life. Well, his mom says that all Cameron really wanted for Christmas was two things, a Nintendo Switch and get to ride along with the officer who saved his life. And Denver police were able to help with both. We rode around in the car and we did tickets and warnings and then we got to catch the guy. I was feeling really excited, like this is going to be my first uh, suspect that I'm going to catch. And so when I did that, it was just, it was really exciting.
This ride along was a planned event, a safer way to, for Cameron to get to experience and a little bit of a taste of what it's like to be a police officer. Today around 500 people in need in our area got a free holiday meal from the Denver Rescue Mission. The group held its yearly Christmas banquet today at the Lawrence Street Community Center. 40 volunteers joined in to help serve that meal. On days like this when it's cold and, and um, snowy, just bringing someone a hot meal with hot cider and hot chocolate is everything. People and businesses across the city, they partner with people and businesses across the city to provide this holiday meal. You can uh, see your area around the world and see when Santa's showing up. You better not pout. We all know why. The jolly old man is coming to town in just two days, and you can track his journey. And if you missed it in theaters, there's a new movie out, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. It's on Netflix, and the director is a Colorado native.